This program was paid for by Water of Life Church. From Water of Life Ministries in Plano, Texas, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is speaking through his servants to the world. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying today. Let us join Doyle Davidson and others of Water of Life, sowing the Word of God in spirit and in truth. Hello, I'm Bill Davidson, servant apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, ministering locally to the body of Christ in Dallas and Fort Worth, Texas, sent by God to your house to declare to you the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4, tell us what the gospel is, how that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. He was buried, he rose again the third day according to the scripture. Thank God. Spare the Lord. Pardon me. Is he anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, sent me to heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance to the captives, come of sight to the blind, set at liberty them that are bruised. Thank God. Amen. The word is lively. Even in your heart and your mouth is the word of faith which I preach. If you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Thank God. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. There's a power of God unto salvation and everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just shall live by his faith. Well, welcome everyone to this broadcast. It's receiving it on uh, live stream, Roku, Apple TV, YouTube, or other devices. Kathy Davidson, co-host, on my left. Good morning, and how are you? I'm doing well. Amen. And guess what? We have a guest with us today, will be every day, from Colorado, been on the staff here 10 years. Amen. Kathy Kerr, can they see her? Can, can she say Good. hello? Good morning. Good morning, Kathy. Good, Good morning. <laughs> Hallelujah. By the way, how's the weather in Colorado? Bright sun and breezy. Yeah. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, uh, we'll be back to you sometime in the program, all right? Okay. Kathy, are we ready to bring out the Bye Girls? We are ready. Well, let's do it.
the other day. Yes, sir. I am told that we have a new monitor here. That's right. And what does it show us? It shows right now, it's showing you and I, so that you and I can see what's going on, uh, what camera views are going out on live stream. Because we couldn't see that before. My goodness, we are, what would you call us? Progressive? Eh? <laughs> Uptown, yeah. I hear Brian Bonner out there. That's right. Amen. Good morning, Brian. How are you? Doing well. Good. Amen. All right. We're going to talk about the blood of Jesus. Oh, amen. The blood of Jesus. I think we ought to start with 1 John 1, 7. All right. I, I want to show you something. And I want to admit that God can do anything he wants to do. But he also is a doer of the word. Amen. Right? Amen. So let's read this. All right, 1 John 1, 7. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Amen. The light is the gospel. Right, and that is 2 Corinthians 4, 4. Right. And if we walk in the light, as who's in the light? The Jesus. Lord? Right. 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 We have fellowship with one another. Amen. You know what that says? Now I'm not saying that God can't do something else, so don't get disturbed and start throwing rocks at me. But that says fellowship is in the gospel. Amen. Right? Amen. So, is it uh, Romans 1 9 that Paul said he served God? Yes. It says, For God is my witness, whom I serve with my spirit in the gospel of his Son, that without ceasing I make mention of you always in my prayers. And we've already told you. The gospel is in First Corinthians 15, right? Right. At the beginning of the program. The death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Amen. That's the gospel, right? Right. You know, when God apprehended Paul, when he met him on the road to Damascus, Paul didn't have a revelation of the gospel. Right. God, Jesus had to give it to him. Right. But Paul was, within three days, born again. Right. And, and, and baptized in the Holy Ghost. And then Jesus taught him. Amen. Amen. So, if we walk in the light, as he's in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus cleanses us of all sin. Amen. Of all sin. Did you know the reason people don't get cleansed from sin? The gospel's necessary. Amen. Amen. It's the power of God. Amen. Under salvation. To everyone that believe it, to the Jew first and also the Greek. Amen. Now, if the Lord wants to anoint the blood when you don't have a revelation of the gospel and have you deliver somebody that's his business. I'm just telling you what 1 John 1, 7 says. If you walk in the gospel, he's in the gospel, you're going to have fellowship with one another like we do. Right. And the blood of Jesus 
is going to cleanse you of all sin. Amen. All right? Amen. Amen. Cleanse you of all sin. Amen. Now, what are we going to do? Well, you know, John, 1 John 5, verse 6, talks about both of them. It says, For this is he, that's talking about Jesus, For this is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. And it is the Spirit that beareth witness, because the Spirit is truth. For there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. And there are three that bear record in earth, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. And that water is the water of the Word. Amen. I tell you what. Back in the early 70s, when I got in the charismatic movement, those scriptures right there had some people buffaloed. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I haven't thought of that word to use it in a long time, you know that? Amen. Water is a word. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Praise God. Amen. Now we're headed. How about Colossians 1? Because you spent, this, that's a teaching that got into my heart early being here. I, Colossians 1, verse 13. I used to teach that early. Often. When right. I started in this building in 1980, on the morning of January the 4th. Amen. And when, I came in 84 in May. And you were still ministering this. And it took me a while. I mean, I would look at the words and you would minister them. And I would say, I don't see this. I don't get it. I don't get it. And one day, after years, I got it. But that's Revelation. Verse 13, Colossians 1. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Did you know there's a scripture in Acts 16, I believe. And I don't think I'll ever forget the day that God showed me that scripture. There was a woman, I think her name's I don't know if it's Lydia or Lydia. Huh? I, I, I say Lydia, yeah. Okay. I may be wrong. Can you find it? No, you don't need to. But you know what? It says, God opened her heart. Yeah, it's right here in verse 14. What? It says, it's right here in verse 14. Read and it. a certain woman named Lydia, a seller of purple, of the city of Thyatira, which worshiped God, heard us, whose heart the Lord opened, that she attended unto the things which were spoken of Paul. Now, well, I'm going to say it. Unless God opens your heart to hear what we're saying, you're not going to get it. Amen. Can we have an amen from the congregation? Amen. You believe that? You know, it talks about that in Hebrews. It says the veil has to come off your heart. Yes. And you won't understand until that veil. It says when you come to Jesus, that veil will come off your heart. All right. Amen. Now, when you turn to him. That's right. Been a long time since I've taught this. Now, where are we at? I don't know. Where you want to go? You want to go to Revelation? Yep, five. Let's go. All right. Revelation 5, verse 9. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation and hast made us unto our God kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. Redeemed us to where? Redeemed us to God. To God. He didn't redeem us to water of life church. Amen. Huh? Amen. No. 
He redeemed us to God. Amen. And he didn't redeem us from the devil to nothing. <laughs> well, notice, he didn't just redeem us. He redeemed us to God. Amen. Yes. Now you're in trouble. God's got you. And you know that, that word redeemed, I studied it out quite a while ago. It means to buy, to buy. purchase. Yeah. Yeah. It means to lose some weight, too. Yes, it does. Amen. Lose some weight. Do you all think you're going to enjoy this program? <laughs> oh, I remember you using those words, loose away. What? I remember you, you using those words, loose away. Yeah. Loose us to God. Right. Right? Right. Look, folks. God didn't redeem you to go build a hundred houses or buy a nice racehorse or get rich. Amen. Now here's a question, and I think somebody's asking it in their hearts. Right. Redeemed us from what? Oh, well, doesn't it say in Colossians 1? Yes. From the power? There you go. Well, let's go back to it. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son? Even? Oh, yes. Uh, it says, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Amen. Yeah. Redeemed by the blood, right? Amen. And forgiveness of sin. Amen. And who did he redeem us from the power of darkness, right? That's right. And where did he put us? To God. Did he put us in the kingdom of his dear son? That's right. Into the kingdom of his dear son. We're not doing too bad teaching, are we? What is it, that prayer that you pray often from Acts? Acts 26. Open their eyes, Father. Turn them from darkness to light. Turn them from the power of Satan to God. Minister forgiveness of their sins to their heart now. And uh, inheritance. Now I can't come up with it. Uh, oh, good Lord. Anyway, may, oh, minister the inheritance among the sanctified ones by the faith of Jesus Christ that's in my heart. Amen. 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 Sorry, folks, I stumbled. So, from the power of darkness to God, it yeah. says, and from the power of Satan unto God. Amen. Now, I'm going to make you mad. God didn't redeem you uh, from the power of Satan to the Methodist Church. Amen. Nor the Baptist Church. Nor the Catholic Church. Amen. Nor the Assemblies of God. He redeemed you to God. Amen. To himself. And somewhere it says, you're bought with a price. Your life is not your own. Amen. That's in Corinthians, I believe. First Corinthians 6. First Corinthians 6. Amen. Amen. So, he didn't redeem you to do what you wanted to do. Amen. Did you know, he didn't redeem you out of darkness and out of poverty and put you in a big 
house and make you rich through my gospel so you can go and do what you want to do with the money. Amen. Oh, my friend, you better repent. You better repent. That money that you make is not yours. It belongs to God. Amen. Now, Katie, where we at it? Well, shall we go to Revelations 12, verse 11? Revelation what? Revelations 12, 11. They overcame. Oh, yes. Let's go. Right. It says, and they overcame him, the devil, by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives unto the death. Now, my friends, when God brought me out of darkness in 1970, he started. My life was not my own. I'm quite sure I was born, well, I know, I was born again just before I was six years old. But I didn't walk in it. I didn't walk in Jesus. But 1970, I started walking in the Lord. Walking in the Lord. James chapter 1, 22 says, Be a doer of the word, not a hearer only, but deceiving your own self. Did you know you deceive yourself? If you hear the word and you're not a doer, Right. And verse Corinthians 10, 13, I think, says there's no temptation taking you, but such is common to man. Isn't that right? And God will, with every temptation, make a way for you to escape where you can bear it. Amen. Katie, you better find that. I've got it. It says, There hath no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able, but will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. And it's interesting, the next verse is, Wherefore, my dearly beloved, flee from idolatry. Flee what? Flee from idolatry. Right. From idolatry. Now, you say, uh, I fell into temptation. Well, big deal. You're coming out. Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. Yeah. God has redeemed you to him. But you fell into temptation. Well, you didn't get to stay there. No, you didn't get to stay there. But if you fell in, you got some things to do to get out. Amen. Right? Amen. And you can stand it. Now I'm talking to anybody in the world. Can you uh, share the difference between temptation and sin? Because some people think they're the same thing. What? The difference between temptation and sin. Well, Jesus was tempted in every point. But he didn't fall in. Right. I've been tempted with my goodness sakes 
everything you can imagine. Jesus was tempted by the devil in Matthew 4 and Luke 4. Amen. But he didn't fall in. Amen. So to say you fell into temptation uh, is saying that you left God. Amen. Well, right? That would be sin then, right? Right. So and you're going to be tempted, but not sin. That's correct. But if you fall into the temptation, you've sinned. You're in sin. Okay. And God is the only one that can get you out. Amen. All right? Amen. Now, so how do we get you out? You fell into temptation. You're living in sin. And, oh, by the way, we talked about this this morning. And you, uh, Katie, said a, a, a scripture, spoke it, that Jesus said about a greater sin. Oh, yes. He was, when Jesus was before Pilate, and Pilate asked Jesus, was, was talking to Jesus, Jesus said, the one that delivered me unto you has the greater sin. So there are levels of sin. Amen. And you mentioned in, uh, I think it's First John, that says that there is a sin unto death. That's right. And you can't pray for that. I believe it's sin in 1 John 2. Okay. Look and see. I'm going there now. Amen. And John said, I wouldn't say that you should pray for that. Right, it's First John 5. Oh, five. Right. right, and it says, If any man see his brother sin a sin which is not unto death, he shall ask and he shall give him life for them that sin not unto death. There is a sin unto death. I do not say that he should pray for it. That's 1 John 5? That's 1 John 5, 16. Right. All right, but he said, John said, I wouldn't say, that you couldn't pray for it, right? He said, I do not say you should pray for it, for it. That's sin unto death. That you could pray for it. Right. It says, I do not say that he should pray for it. Oh. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, when the Lord gets you, he starts showing you who you are. Amen. Oh, yeah. He's going to bring you to Jesus. Isn't that right? Amen. He's going to bring you to Jesus. And you're going to start seeing what you are made of. What your heart's like. What your soul's like. And everything you're going to see is ugly. Amen. I wish I could tell you, oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> we got some people laughing. Yeah, because they've seen some of it, right. Right. Oh, it's so beautiful. Good night. <laughs> Folks, I didn't know I was so nice. In my own eyes. <laughs> Till the Lord started showing me how ugly my life was. Amen. So the first thing he's going to do is convince you of sin. Righteousness and judgment. Right. Is that Luke 16? John 16. John 16. What? John 16. John 16. All right, you want to read it? Sure will. John 16, verse 8. And when he is come, and this is the Holy Ghost, it said, well, let me verse, begin in verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. 
It is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, yeah. Did you know it's sin to not believe on Jesus? Absolutely. Did you know that Mr. Muslim Amen. did you know it was sin not to believe on Jesus Christ of Nazareth Amen. Amen. Thank God. and that says what righteousness of righteousness because I go to my father and you see me no more right and, and of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. Right. The devil has been judged. Amen. All right? Now, God's going to deal with you like this. If you're not blaming on Jesus, you're in sin. And that's the first thing that you're going to have to get changed. Amen. And start believing on him. And you can't say, this is so hard. So difficult. <laughs> sure it is. When you believe lies all your life. Yes, right. Amen. Amen. So you're going to have to start believing and praying. And you know one of the things that the Lord has redeemed you from unbelief. Amen. Did you know that redemption, that was Colossians 1, 13 and 14, as he took us from the power of darkness, translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. And it was through redemption, even the forgiveness of sins. Is that close to right? Yes, that is very close to right. We'll make it right. Okay. Who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. But that word even is italicized. It was added in. It, even forgiveness of sins? No, the word even was italicized. Is italicized. Yeah, well, they stuck that in there. But, Redemption but, through his blood, the forgiveness of sins. Yeah, right. All right, here we go. He's going to start redeeming you. Amen. Oh, my. So, what happened to Doyle Davidson? Now, I know you hate him, but he is your example. Well, he'll show you through the Word what you're going to have to do to get with Jesus. Amen. First Peter 5, I believe, says, and not what, an example? Right. Yeah. Example. So here's the way the Lord led me. I am redeemed by the blood of Jesus from the power of darkness. Loosed away from darkness. Oh, it's so dark. Loosed away. I prayed it and I started praying other things. I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus from all guilt. Oh, 
What made you guilty? Ha, huh, the law. Amen. I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Amen. from the law of Moses. Amen. Now, I don't know what God will do with you, but one day he started naming the Ten Commandments one at a time. And I, I was at Lake Lebon praying. I went to Lake Lebon to pray, and whether you people knew it or not. And he started setting me, setting me free from the law of Moses. The law of Moses, well, sure, it's the law that makes you guilty. Amen. Is that right? Amen. Amen. Then you're going to have to start praying. I've been redeemed from lust. What kind? Amen. Well, you may have to leave it. In fact, you will. You may not want to be in front of church doing this. <laughs> you don't want to be in front of church doing this, right? <laughs> it's it's good at home. It's good in your car. In that soundproof closet, right? <laughs> yeah. Amen. What time is it? It is 11:40. Oh, good. We're doing well. Redeem from the deceitfulness of riches. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You're, you may have to pray that a hundred times. Just a hundred? <laughs> <laughs> How about months? Yeah. <laughs> you can't pray it twice and say, that's it. Yeah. Only a fool thinks their faith is perfect Amen. and their believing is perfect. Amen. Now, you're going to have to pray. You've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus from the cares of the world. Fear, that's what that is. Fear, you'll have to pray that. You may have to pray that uh, in a, well, every now and then, but God will lead you. Amen. Now, redeem. You got the idea. Redeem. Oh, I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus for wanting a wife. What? What? Did you know I was not very smart back in the 70s. I didn't like a lot of what I was saying. I said to the Lord, why don't you make me a celibate? He said, because I didn't make you that way. Amen. Wow. You mean I can't choose what I want to be? I mean, the choice was made when they built you. Amen. Too bad, folks. I was not uh, chosen by God to be a veterinarian. Thank God. So I got to pray. I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus from rebellion. <laughs> Amen. Nah, we're getting honest. Yeah, we're getting honest. <laughs> I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus from rebellion. 
oh, one day you'll say, my God, I was like Jonah, and I'm in my own fish's belly, and it's not in the depth of the ocean. You don't have your own fish. Amen. It'll be ugly. Jonah called it hell. Huh? Jonah called it hell. He sure did. Oh, you'll start singing, I love Jesus. Amen. You do? If you love me, keep my commandments. Amen. So, you've been redeemed. You have been redeemed from all these things. And then, redeemed from sin. Redeemed from sin. This sin, that sin, that kind of sin. Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't come in one big package, huh? No, no, no. That comes through prayer. Amen. Well, I didn't remember doing that sin. The Lord said, well, I did. <laughs> but most of the time, when you hit a sin that God's convincing you of, you say, oh, my God. I didn't know you knew that. <laughs> oh, my. Lord, I didn't know you knew everything I did. Oh, yes. And you've got to be, what? Redeemed from it. As we walk in the light. Right. Right. Amen. Those things are the light. What's it say in John 3? The light of the glorious gospel shines right, right on them. Yeah. Right. And then we go to justification. Now, we're, this, these are just brief examples. We'll be doing this as the Lord leads. Amen. But justify. That's Romans 3, 25, I think. Is it? Romans 3, 25, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in his blood, to declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. Yeah, what's the next one? And it says, to declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Who does what? The justifier, it said, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. And what's the next one? And then it says, where is boasting then is excluded. By what law? Yea, but the law uh, of works, nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Oh my goodness. Justified by faith? Yes. Without the deeds of the law? Right. You don't need the law, folks. Amen. You don't need it. It's bondage. Amen. It's contrary to faith. Amen. Amen. And that takes us to Romans 5 1. Right. It says, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And that goes to verse 9. Much more than being justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. Now, we've got all kinds of examples here. We've dealt with redemption, forgiveness, uh, now justification. We've dealt with taken from the power of God, translated into the kingdom Bez dear son, we've taken, we've talked about the uh, redeem from the power of darkness to God, Amen. not to a religion. Amen. No. So, 
you're going to have to pray. Redemption's lengthy. Forgiveness is lengthy. Uh, justification is lengthy. But you're just going to have to pray. You know, the, the, the thing that you've taught us and that happened to you in Argyle and happened to me is when you walk in the light, when you walk in the gospel with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is the one that will lead you what to pray, right. when to pray, and how to pray. And he'll lead you to pray about I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus. Now, let me tell you, you don't, uh, don't believe this, that you went to a, a crusade and they walked you down the aisle and stood you before a big time preacher or a small time and he prayed and all your sins were forgiven and he told you your brave sin don't you believe that one minute Amen. believe you started getting free Amen. but keep praying let God lead you. Did you know about uh, three years ago, God delivered me from sin that I committed many years ago? Yeah, when I was praying. Amen. As you walked so, in the light. That's right. So you think, you're free, I'm cool, you're a fool. Right. Like we said, if that was the case, then everybody that went to one of those meetings afterwards would be able to walk on water, heal the sick, raise the dead, and that doesn't happen. Right. And you've taught us for years that not only do your sins need to be forgiven, but you need to be sanctified and redeem from what caused the sin. Let's go to Romans 6, could we? Oh, sure. A few minutes. We've got another 15, 20 minutes. Amen. It says, it's 9 till. It says, uh, Romans 6, where would you like me to begin? Well, I don't know, so start. All right, let's start in the beginning. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Dead to sin? Dead to sin. Oh, wait a minute. Dead to sin? Did you know when something is dead and you pinch it, it doesn't say ouch? Amen. Did you know that when sin is dead or you're, you're dead to that sin, somebody mentions it? Mm. Did you know when it's not dead, I did not, you won't set me free. All you ever do is accuse me. You know what you're saying? Your sins are talking. That's right. Ouch. <laughs> That's a good word right there. Ouch. I thought that sin was dealt with. Yeah. It was. But you don't believe it. Oh my goodness sakes. You know. I was, God told me not to be a veterinarian, but be a minister of the gospel in 1958, and I didn't do it. And I went on, graduated University of Missouri, then I practiced eight years, and then God said, sell everything, and he started delivering me. But I didn't get delivered. The day I walked out 
in the hospital. Amen. No, I didn't. I prayed a lot of moments, hours, being delivered. And it wasn't pretty being delivered. And I think, will this ever stop? No. Until you pray. Hallelujah. And sanctification is an ongoing process. Right, sure is. And salvation yes. is not a one time experience. Amen. Amen. It's a process. So, beautiful. You'll, start, you'll have to pray and be led by the Holy Ghost. And he'll put a finger on a sin. And you say, oh, nah, bind you, devil. <laughs> and that usually happens the moment you start trying to believe for something. I mean, you start, okay, I need to believe God for a job. And that's when those sins start coming up. Yeah, but I love that one. I bind you, devil. <laughs> It's not the devil talking to you. Amen. <laughs> it's a devil. The devil in you. It's sin in you. It's sin that you have committed and they're not forgiven. Amen. Oh yes, they were forgiven on the cross, but you have not, with your faith, been Forgiven, nor redeemed, nor justified. <laughs> Maybe sanctified. Oh, this is a long process. And you're going to get mad at the preacher on television. <laughs> well, you are. Start yelling at him. Well, you know how, how that goes. You start yelling at the TV preacher. All you ever do is condemn us. I'm not condemning you. Your own heart condemns you. Amen. 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 Thank what time is it? It is 1156. Amen. Redeem. Justify. You're going to have to pray, folks, about redemption, forgiveness, justification, righteousness, redeem from sin. You're going to have to learn how to pray, and that's to be led by the Holy Ghost. That sounds like you won't be able to do that unless you're reading the Word of God with it. Unless you're what? Reading the Word of God. Well, you got that right. Yeah. So, some of you have ouchies. <laughs> have you ever heard of them? Of them? Ouch. You're always condemning me. Ouch. Listen, you know what that is in you? Your sin, saying ouch. If you're dead to sin, the sin is not going to be alive. Amen. Are you there? You know, I, Katie, I think this might be a a good time to terminate this. Amen. We can go to Romans 6 tomorrow. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. But you know what? I think we need to tune in to Byers, Colorado. Amen. If we could. Amen. Hello, Kathy. Kathy Hello. Kathy Courier. She's hooked up to us now. She's with us 
Yet she's, what, 900 miles from here or somewhere? That's right. Have you got anything that the Lord would like to say? Uh, I might have some ouchies. <laughs> you might what? <laughs> I said, I might have some ouchies. <laughs> I don't know if I've ever used that much. Okay, if you want to talk, go ahead. Mm. Uh, but, uh, no, I really don't have anything to talk about about that. But I would like to uh, say this, that um, I didn't really talk about this yesterday, but uh, when, after my husband went to heaven, uh, I painted for a couple years, um, and I only talked to you maybe two times. But I just want to share with the world that maybe hasn't heard this testimony that I received a phone call from you one evening and you asked me about my financial situation. And I said, well, I'm doing okay. I am uh, taking care of my, you know, my day-to-day -day, uh, bills and things like that. But I said, I have a pretty big debt load and I'm not even touching that. And you took me to James, uh, and read to had me read where it says pure religion undefiled this is what this is to uh, be there for the I don't I should read it I guess be for, there for the widow um, and the fatherless in their affliction okay. and God sent God sent you um, to this house and you read those scriptures to me and said I believe that this is God and he's going to deliver you out of your debt and I remember getting off the phone just weeping. Um, I'd been believing as much as I knew, which was, of course, very little. But God had much mercy. And uh, the people came and laid uh, money at the apostles' feet for his distribution. And I was out of debt in about two weeks. And it wasn't just a few hundred dollars. It was in the thousands. And uh, my son was 16 and uh, driving a pickup that he was working on on the side of the road most of the time. And God bought him a vehicle to drive. And uh, I just want the world to know what God has done in this house um, out of the apostle and prophet's heart. And I just thank God that he met a widow and the fatherless and their affliction. And I have seen him work that same grace in my mother's life, who is a widow, and my sister, who is recently widowed. So I thank God for this ministry. Catherine, I knew that you had to be last. <laughs> but what you just said, has to be first in many people's lives. Amen. Amen. So, Amen. until tomorrow, we are going to leave you in Colorado. Amen. Thank you, and good day. Good day. Amen. Thank God. All right, Katie, what are we going to do? Anything else? I think we've pretty much covered it. It's afternoon. I think what Catherine just shared is a good ending, don't you? Yes, I do. And I want to say this. That wasn't the only widow you've ever helped. And what? That was not the only widow that you have ever helped. <laughs> well, let's don't take it up every day at her, all at once. Mercy, grace, mercy, grace, mercy, grace be multiplied to, unto you through the knowledge of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. See you tonight. Yes. We invite you to visit Water of Life Church at 1621 18th Street in Plano, Texas. Or for further information, call area code 972 
972-578-8082. That's 972-578-8082. Or write Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. That's Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. This program was paid for by Water of Life Church.